Today is a big day for our church family, a time we have prayed for for many, many months. We want to extend a special welcome to Pastor Justin, Hannah, and their family. The choir and orchestra will be presenting Christmas at the Spring on Saturday, December 9th at 7 p.m. and Sunday, December 10th at 6 p.m. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Church family, let this be a day of us seeking God's will. Now join us as we worship the Lord. Sure good to see all who are here this morning. We have guests with us, and we want you to know that you are, you are special. And it, it's, it's a great delight to us to have you here on this important uh, Sunday morning. We're grateful that you've come to be a part of our service. Make yourself right at home. Worship the Lord with us. Sing along with the choir. Pat your foot. Say amen. <laughs> Just be at home. And let's let the Lord direct this service uh, from the beginning unto the end. Uh... song today and pull out an old Dottie Rambo song. The holy hills of heaven call me. And the thing about this song is, it's not calling the flesh, is it? It's calling the spirit. The part that God saved. To come on home, that part longs to go home. Flesh don't. Don't want to ever leave here. The flesh don't. Hope you enjoy this song.
in visions I see a beautiful gate, and I long to pass through. since we've sang in the church always seems to enjoy it. I hope it blesses your heart. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right.
my great privilege uh, this morning to introduce our preacher for the service. Before I do so, I want to just say a word. Back in the summer when I appointed five men to serve on the pastor search committee, I put a lot of prayer into it as well. It, that was not an easy task either. But when I picked those men and chose those men under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I believe uh, that those men were men of integrity and character and probably as important, they were men of prayer. And that was the criteria I was looking for. I was looking for those kind of fellows and I think we found five men that fit that, uh, fit that mold. And uh, I am going to support their recommendation Amen. without reservation because I trust them. And I'm going to vote with the recommendation of the committee, gladly so. And I would suggest that every member of our church do the same. 28 and a half years ago, a pulpit committee and all three of them are sitting here this morning, a pulpit committee presented me to Clear Springs. And I believe they did it in hopes that the church would support their decision. And the church did support their decision. And God has blessed and God has been good to me. He's been good to our church. But I think brighter days are ahead. I believe greater things are yet to be accomplished. I believe Justin Pratt is the man for this hour. He is currently pastor at Valley View Baptist Church, done a tremendous work there. His family is with us, his wife Hannah and his children are with us today. And Justin, as soon as we complete the special song, you come and lead however God leads you and conduct this service. And we're, we're looking forward to hearing what God has to say to us through you. I just sang this song a couple of weeks ago, but I've had several requests to sing it again. I hope it touches your heart. They say times are changing, so we should change too. Trade our old time religion for something new our faith is outdated why live in the past my answer is simple so if you ask i still love to hear how god's love paid the cost his passion was fastened by nails to Cross. I still love the sound of the saints as they sing songs of the blood Jesus shed just for me. I still love an altar where broken ones pray and find what is found in no other way. It may be old fashioned, but it's real still. I'll stay on the old path that's brought us this far Saved countless millions and reached hardened hearts Our old times are changing and forever will Listen to me There'll still be one Savior, one Calvary's Hill I still Love this hour, how God's love paid the cost. As passion was fastened by nails to a cross, I still love the sound as the saints start to sing 
Songs of the blood Jesus shed just for me. I still love an altar where broken ones pray and find what is found in no other way. It may be old-fashioned, but it's real still. I still love to hear how God's love paid the cost. His passion was fastened by nails to a cross. I still love the sound as the saints start to sing. Songs of the blood Jesus shed just for me. I still love an altar where broken ones pray. Find what is found in no other way. It may be old fashioned, but it's real still. It may be old fashioned, but it's real. Almost 20 years ago, I was on the campus of Cumberland College University in Williamsburg, Kentucky. I wasn't a student there. I was a 17-year-old boy at a Champions for Christ Bible camp. And uh, that night, it was a a Friday night, I believe it was, and uh, Brother Boyd Bingham out of Middlesbrough, Kentucky stood that night. And he preached the Word of God and he hammered and hammered and hammered about the importance of surrendering your life to the will of God. I found a pew that night and I crawled up under it and I said, Lord, I have no idea what you're going to do with my life. I have no idea where you're going to send me. I kind of felt like uh, uh, Isaiah felt in the sixth chapter when he said, Lord, here am I, send me. Have no details as where he's going to go, no idea of what God is going to do. Two years later, at the church that I now pastor, I found myself in an altar where I began to pour my heart out to God. I was 19 years old. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want to do with my life, but I sure would love it if you would use it. And that morning, I announced my call to preach. My life has taken a lot of different turns uh, to this point. And uh, I'm humbled and amazed to be here this morning at this moment. And uh, I think that it would be amiss if I didn't take a moment just to say that I don't think any of us would be here, nor would we be in this building, if it wasn't for a brother Jerry Vitito. I think he deserves a round of applause. Thank you, brother Jerry. And what I hope to do is just try to put my hands on the same plow and keep going down the same road. And... uh, I, it's my distinct honor. I, I want to take a moment before I preach. We're going to be in the third chapter of the book of Joshua. If you'll turn to the Old Testament, Joshua chapter number three. And, uh, but I, I do want to take just a moment to recognize my family is with me this morning, of course. And uh, I'd like for my wife Hannah to stand up for just a moment, if she will. And she's holding Asher. He's our brand new little guy. He is seven months old. And this is my wife Hannah. Uh, is Lydia in here anywhere? Where's Lydia? There's Lydia. All right, she's already found her some friends over there. Thank you, you could be seated. And Lincoln's in Children's Church, right? I would ask you a favor. Don't let your Children's Church workers vote tonight. All right? Thank you. You guys have already been so kind. Um, I want to say this before I read my text. I've been blown away at the... Uh, the kindness and the sincerity that we've already experienced. Uh, from people sending us Facebook messages to people just, uh, just uh, texting us and didn't even recognize who they were. And uh, obviously this is a place where the Spirit of the Lord is and the love of God abounds from person to person and that's already been felt. 
And I want to thank you if for you that. If you've got Man, your Bible, just... stand with us this morning. I want to take a very familiar portion of Scripture, and I want to draw from it some very timely truths that will parallel why we are here this morning, on this day, at this moment, in this season. And uh, from this text, there's going to be three glorious truths. And uh, you'll learn about me. I'm big about this. I hope you'll write them down. They're going to emerge from this text, and you're going to say, wow. God put that in his word many years ago, and he put it there for us at Clear Springs Baptist Church on this morning, on this day, and God being our helper. Verse number one in Joshua chapter number three. The Bible says that Joshua rose up early in the morning and removed from Chittim and came to Jordan. And he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest and the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place, and boy, I like these next three words or four words, and go after it. Let me just call a time out and say we will never go wrong if we go where the presence of God leads us. Can I get an amen right there? We will never go wrong when we follow the presence and the spirit of the holy living God. The Bible says in verse number four, yet there shall be a space between you about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know that the way uh, by which you must go. Now watch this, I want you to grab this. For you have not passed this way heretofore. This is a new day for you, Israel. There's some transitions that are about to happen, Israel. And you have to prepare yourself. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. Boy, when I read this, I about did a Holy Ghost cartwheel. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. That's Joshua saying, uh, you better buckle up because God has some big things that are in store. But verse number six, the Bible says, Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that I, as I was with Moses. Yeah, I like that. As I was with Moses. Can I just add something right here? As I was with Brother Jerry, so shall I be with thee. Verse number 10, let's skip ahead. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and he will without fail drive out before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. And I thank God so good he drove out the termites at this point. Behold, the ark of the covenant, verse 11, of the Lord, of the, all the earth shall pass before you into Jordan. Now therefore take your 12 men out of the 12 tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above and they shall stand up on a heap. And it come to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the, what, they've got to be a miracle right here. And as the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth at all his banks at the time of harvest that the waters which came down above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam that is beside Zaratan to those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, fell and were cut off against the people, passed right over against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, watch this, 
The Bible said they stood firm on dry ground. They stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Let's pray together. Father, God, we need your touch this morning. We need your favor. Lord, if we show up and only give what we have, we'll make a mess. But if we'll open ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit of God to operate through our life, we can see great things that will happen on this day. We'll be sure that you get all the praise and that you get all the honor and that you get all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to draw your attention back to verse number 17 where the Bible says that the priest, they come down in verse 17 and they bear the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible says that when they dip their foots into the brim of the Jordan, that the Jordan River rolled back all the way to Mount Hermon, all the way down to the Dead Sea. And it said that they stood firm on dry ground. And Israel began to pass over as they went. Now now understand something here. They are marching into the promised land at this moment. God has brought them to this moment. God has brought them to this place. And now they stand there at the brink of the Red Sea. And in by faith, they step their foot into the brim of that water, bearing the Ark of the Covenant. And the, just like they had seen happen before at the Red Sea that they sang about a while ago, the waters rolled back and the priest stepped into that mud, what should have been muddy ground. But the Bible said that it was dry and Israel began to pass over into the promised land. Church, I'm going to make a statement. We're going to get right to it this morning. What we find in the text before us is the importance of a group of people who band themselves together under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, carrying with them the divine manifest presence of God. And the important thing that you see is that they stood firm together with that thought on our mind and in our hearts. I'd like to preach today on this thought, shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart. Boy, if there's anything the devil would like to do to this church, just like he would any church, he would love to divide because if he can divide, then understand he can conquer. But if we get yoked up together and we carry the presence of God and we work together as a family, we can charge hell with a water pistol, kick the devil in the mouth, swing out over hell in a rotten grapevine. I'm telling you, there he holds no power over the people of God when we function in the spirit of unity and we work together as the family of God. Now in Joshua chapter 3, this is a new day for Israel. The Bible tells us, they've never, the Bible to Joshua said to him, you've never passed this way before. You've you, you never been through this on this way. But boy, I like that next verse. Joshua said, I know you've never been this way before, but you just hang on and watch because our God is going to do wonders among you. You're going to see some things happen. You're going to see some things. By the way, the word wonder, it's a Hebrew word, pala. And what the word means, it means a marvelous thing. You're going to see a surpassing thing. You're going to see an extraordinary thing. What Joshua was saying is you don't know it yet, but you're about to walk into a land where the, where the pomegranates are the size of basketballs and the rivers flow with milk and honey. And you're going to taste the sweetness of God. And Joshua tells them, you're going to see God do some great things. You see, here's what we need to see. Joshua comes to a group of hurting people. You say, why were they hurting? I'll tell you why. Because two chapters before, their leader Moses, who had been with them for years, is now stepped off the scene. He's went to the top of Mount Nebo and only God knows why. His eyes were not dim. His health was not abated. But the Bible says on top of Mount Nebo, there Moses died and they're left without a leader. And Joshua assumes the responsibility and he comes along as Moses' successor and he says to these people, listen, I've already been with God and God's already gave me a promise. Just as he was with Moses, you can rest assured that he's gonna be with you. No need to fret. No need to fear. I'm going to travel the same path that Moses traveled. 
And what we find is a great text here. Verse 17 is where I want to get to. The Bible says that they stood firm. That is, they stood together shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart. I want to give you three things this morning that if we as a church are going to thrive and survive, we better learn to stand firm in these three areas. Number one, if you're keeping notes, would you write this down? We have to stand together in transition. Y'all can say amen right there. We have to stand together in transition. Now understand something. I want you to think about what's happening here. Joshua has assumed command and they have come to the edge of the Jordan River and just on the other side we find the promised land. But notice that where they were standing was at the brink of the Jordan River at harvest time where the Bible said that it overflowed. Matter of fact, I found out that at this particular time the waters could be up to 15 foot deep and the river could be up to 98 foot wide. This was no easy obstacle for them. They had never been this way before. And here God shows up and says to Joshua, Joshua, I want you to cross over. And the command is very clear. Take the ark of the covenant. And the priest started to take the ark and to step into the river. And just like the Red Sea, the waters are going to part. Now, now watch this, watch this. As they're doing this, we see that the children of Israel and their leadership is in a place of transition. Now transition is defined as a process of change. Transition is defined as a period of time in which something undergoes a change. These people understood transition. Watch this. Travel with me for a moment. They transitioned from the leadership of Moses to the leadership of Joshua. They transitioned from 40 years in the wilderness to a brand new day in the land of Canaan. They're transitioning from being pilgrims, oh, I like this right here, to settling into a place where there were houses that they did not build, there were wells that they did not dig, there were vineyards that they did not plant. This was a new day. This was a new era. This was a time of transition. My point here is, is that in a day of transitioning, in a day of change, Joshua alludes to this in verse 4 when he says you've never passed this way before. Now I'm going to tell you, I've never pastored a Methodist church. I've never pastored a Presbyterian church. I've never pastored a Catholic church. But I have pastored Baptist. And I know Baptist. Woo! Woo! They don't like change. They don't even want you to change the light bulbs half the time. I, I know Baptist. Boy, I'm, I'm about convinced Israelites weren't Baptist. Because the Bible said in a day of transition, watch this, they yoked up and they stood together. They stood firm and they walked together through this. This is a place they've never been. This was something they had never done. This was somewhere they had never went. But yet the Bible said that they stood together. By the way, let me just throw something in real quick. Jordan is an interesting place. Everything that touched Jordan went under some kind of change. But for example, I want you to think about Elijah. Elijah went down, took his mantle, and he smote the Jordan. And having smote the Jordan, the power of God fell on him, and it changed his ministry. I'm thinking about Naaman, who went down there, body filled with leprosy, sores from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, and he stepped into the Jordan seven times, and he walked away a clean man. I, I'm thinking about uh, Gideon when Gideon went down to the Jordan and took a thousand man army but he got down like a dog and began to lap the waters of Jordan and when he looked up only three, hey Jordan is a place where things begin to transition and change now watch this Jordan represents transition church I just want to say this and we're moving on as a body of believers much like Israel, whether you realize it or not, and I'm not coming to pretend that I know everything about this church, but I was telling some folk last night, I've studied y'all just as much as you've studied me. Huh? 
I, hey, 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 I, w- I wanted to know what I was bringing my family to. I know some Baptists ain't nice, amen, right there. And, uh, and so, so as I was thinking about this, I've, I've watched the videos on YouTube and I've talked to people that know about this church and, and I've done my homework on the history of the church. I've heard about the days. I've got an older man in my church that went here as a little kid and he said, preacher, he said, I remember days at Clear Springs and some of you can go back there when you were in a little ship white building and preacher Frank Garrett mounted the pulpit like a wild man. He said, I remember there were Sundays when the bootleggers would come out of the mountains of Corrington, Tennessee, and they'd give their heart to God. And I remember when bootleggers were getting saved left and right, and then God brought you a Shields Dalton, who I never got to meet, but I've often heard said you remind us of him when you was his age. And then God brought you a brother Jerry, who took the gospel plow and kept on rowing and kept on rowing. You've been through some change, and as I look at this building today, it's obvious you know something about standing firm and walking together you would not be here did you not understand that amen amen Amen. walking together in unity here's your good one you transition from a building on Thompson School Road to a building on Tazzle Pike my wife and I when we got married we bought a Victorian house that we remodeled in Forthingill. That was our first home. And we lived in that thing while we were working on it, and I came to this conclusion. I learned about 20 years of marriage experience in four months of working on a messed up house. (laughs) Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I learned that if you can survive within the first year of your home a remodel on your house, you ought to be able to survive anything in your marriage. Now, let me, let me, y'all, y'all go help me preach right here. Y'all go help me preach right here. If you can survive five, six hundred, seven hundred Baptists moving from one building to a next building and you survive, can I get an amen? Somebody knows how to work together. Somebody knows. Hey, hey, what I'm talking about is that we're going to make it. We got to stand together in days of transition. L- let, me give you, let me give you a principle here and I'll move on. Snowflakes are very frail. You ever caught a snowflake in your hand? You, you, you literally can watch it hit your hand, and right before your very eyes, that thing dissipates and turns into water. Am I right? Am I right? Snow, one snowflake is very frail. But you let enough of them little suckers get linked up together, and they'll shut down the school system. Amen. Come on! Y- y'all better help me preach right there. Y'all's video guy's going to hate me. I don't know who he is, but here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you get enough of God's people working together and you let them get yoked up and they get yielded together in the bonds and spirit of unity, I'm telling you, let the devil yell boo. All he wants to bow, boo us. We're not worried about it because there is strength in working together, shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart. Paul said, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren. Corinth was in a mess. He shows up and he said, I'm begging you by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together. The psalmist said in 133 verse 1, how beautiful and pleasant is it when brethren dwell in what? Unity. Listen, understand, Joshua said that if we're going to make it, we've got to stand together in transition. Here's what I know before I give you number two. In transition, number one, God is always faithful. And number two, God will honor and bless a group of people who work together in spite of their differences in the context of unity and God can use that. Number two, number one, we got to stand together. Shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart in transition. Number two, we got to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart in trials. In trials. Now, now I'm going to show you something. I, I got to hurry. But I want to show you something. Verse 11, watch this. Verse 11, the Bible said, Joshua commands the Israel, he said, I want you to take the Ark of the Covenant 
You got to stay with me here. You'll miss this. You take the Ark of the Covenant. Let me just stop there. The Ark of the Covenant was a box that had been built by Moses. It was about four foot by two and a half foot by two and a half foot. Now watch this. I did a little work this week on this. I want you to think about this. It was built of Achaia wood. They said the wood that it was built out of would have weighed about 25 pounds of wood. It had a mercy seat that was on top. There were poles that come out either end. It had golden rings and two angels that sat on either end. They said that the gold that it would have taken to cover that box, it was completely covered in gold, would have weighed approximately, listen to this, 275 pounds of gold. Those angels were about 52 pounds apiece based on the dimensions. That's 104 more pounds. I'm going somewhere. The poles and the rings that were on that box were about 40 pounds. 50 pounds would have been the contents that were inside of the Ark of the Covenant. This would have made the Ark of the Covenant, if you add all what I just gave you up, it would have been anywhere, give or take, 615 to 620 pounds. Y'all getting this? 615 to 620 pounds. And Joshua said to the priest, I want you to get this ark and I want you all to bear it. I'm I'm, I'm gonna need some help this morning. Brother Brother Mike, Brother Tim, come come help me for just a second. It's 600 pounds, but it's gonna do the job. You guys hold this right here for me. Uh, uh, Brother John, let me borrow you. And uh, let let me get one more. Brother Jeremy, let me borrow you. Let them help you out, guys. That's 600 pounds you're holding right there. So the Bible said he took the four priests. Now watch this. Stay with me. He said, I want you to take the box. 620 pounds. And now watch this. What did he tell them to do? He said, go step into Jordan. They can't see you over. Let's get in the middle right here, guys. I forget. Y'all behind me while I'm preaching. That's weird to me. I like it, though. Watch this. Watch this. There they stand, they're holding this 620 pound box and Joshua says, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna step down into the Jordan River. What? Joshua, you're gonna get us to step, it's harvest time, the water's wide, the water's deep. Did you notice, by the way, it says that the Jordan River flowed down. By the way, do you know what Jordan means? It means descender. It starts at the top of Mount Hermon, uh, Hermon, which is 9,000 feet above sea level, flows down to the Dead Sea, which is about 1,300 feet below sea level because it travels down and it's harvest time. The water has a very rampant current. And Joshua tells those men, I want you to step down. Here's my point. This would have been a trial for them. You want us to step in the Jordan holding a 620 pound box. You gotta be kidding me, Joshua. Joshua said, only thing I'm telling you is exactly what God told me to do. This reminds us there'll be seasons of difficulty. There'll be times of hardship. There'll be times of pressure. There will be times of treasure, of trials and tribulation. But stay with me just a moment. If you know anything about the history of Israel at this particular moment, when those priests stepped into that water and the waters rolled back and 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 I, I And they stood there in that river Jordan on dry ground. Watch this. They say that at this particular point in Israel's history, there was about two to two and a half million Jews that are following Joshua and this Israelite camp. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is when those priests stepped into that river and that water was beaten up against their backs. Y'all listening to me? Y'all listening to me? And that water and that pressure is beating up against their back. It didn't take 15 minutes for 2 million people to cross a 100-foot river. 
Most Bible scholars believe to get two million people across that river would have took anywhere from 20 to 30 days that those priests stood there and they bore that ark and they took the pressure because they knew, honey, there were children that had to get to the other side. But they said, hey, hey, we will take the force that'll beat against us. We'll let hell come against us. We'll not move. We'll not budge. We'll not bow. And the Bible said they they staked their feet and they stood firm as two million Jews crossed that river. Time of trials. You know what you got a picture of right here? You got a picture of the only way we're going to survive and thrive of his church is if we stand together when trials come. I pastor long enough to know that sometimes people go through tribulations, divorces happen. Children die. Things fall apart. Jobs are lost. You say, preacher, I don't need this church. Let's suppose that's true. But I'm going to tell you something. This church needs you. And whether you realize it or not, we need one another. And during times of trials is when we stand together bearing the presence of God. And we can make it together. Watch what, what, this, watch this. Tim, if you would, step away. What if, what if one priest would have said, you know what, you can sit down. What if, what if, what if one priest would have said, I ain't doing this no more. I can't take it no more. The pressure would have got harder on them. Huh? I mean, and here's another beautiful thing. Look, we got different guys up here. We, 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 we got young guys and we got good looking guys. and We, we got Goliath. And, 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 and we got Zacchaeus. Uh, uh, huh? My, 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 my point is this. They didn't all look alike. They didn't all think alike. They didn't all come from the same place. But here's what they understood. We've got to work together. Our philosophies may be different. Our ideologies may vary. But at the end of the day, we've got to stand firm. Because if one person, you can sit down, let's go. The pressure gets harder for somebody else. Thank you, fellas. Took four of them to hold what I can hold by myself. <laughs> Here, here's, here's my point. Here's my point. These guys are standing in a river with water hitting against their backs. Trials and pressure. But they stood together. Let me tell you something. When we ever learn, we, we, we stand together. Hell may come against us. The world may come against us. But you take God's people like a snowflake and yoke them up together. And I'm telling you, we can stand when things get difficult. But here's the key. They only got through that day because they stood together in times of trial. Every now and then, you know what we need to do? We need to reach across the aisle and grab you grab my hand and I'll grab your hand and let our hearts be knitted together. And listen, there's no telling what God is what God will do. I've often thought I was thinking and reading this story, and it's just how my ADHD mind works. And I tried to put myself in the moment, and here's what I began to think. I could see him, Brother Mike, yoking up together, elbow to elbow, and I can hear him crossing that river doing something like this. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel this side I'm a part of the family the family of God let me give you a third thing we got to stand together in days of transition we got to stand together in days of trials but here's what I want you to get we got to stand together in the truth <clears throat> Remember what those priests were bearing? The Ark of the Covenant. 
Oh yeah, this, this, it's about to get real good up in here. They're bearing the Ark of the Covenant. By the way, the Ark of the Covenant was symbolic of God's presence. Remember when Uzziah had put it on a cart because he got lazy and didn't want to bear the brunt of 600 pounds alone. And the Bible said the oxen stumbled, the ark began to fall. He reached up to steady the ark and he died on the spot because he wasn't supposed to be do that in God's presence. Ark symbolizes God's presence. But, but I want to show you something. Do you know that those Israelites that have been living in that wilderness, in that tabernacle, they never been inside the Holy of Holies, but they knew, based off the teachings of Moses, they knew what was inside that ark. They knew when they walked by that river that day, there were some things that helped them stand together. And I imagine if they could have lifted the lid off that mercy seat, they knew that somewhere inside that ark, the Bible tells us that there was the Ten Commandments. Here's what they knew. When they walked by the ark that day, here's what they'd have thought. They'd have thought, oh Lord, we gotta stand together in the precepts of God's word. God has given us a word. God has given us a truth. I like what Brother Mike sang a while ago. I know they're shifting our culture. I know they're telling us we need to do church like this and do church like that and I know they tell us we ought to do this and, and this is going to build your church I say stay with the old past it'll still get the job done you take the word of God take the man of God in the spirit of God with the love of God and preach the word of God and let God do the rest of the work hey 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 Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. As long as God gives me a breath, you have my word, should you vote on me. Well, even if you don't vote on me, I'm still going to do it. I will be studied up, prayed up, pumped up, primed up and ready to mount that pulpit, having been with God, with the word to give to his people, that'll charge us, that'll change us, that'll make a difference in our life. Amen. We're gonna expound truth. We're gonna get down to where the rubber meets the road. Sometimes we may lose, leave with our toenails bruised, but it's good for our hearts. They may come through our doors and say, you preached against things that you can't preach against. You can't speak that anymore. You say, preacher, what are you going to do? I'm going to preach it anyway and then pray to God that y'all come down the road of Maloneyville and bail me out. We are, listen, 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 I got to hurry. We are living in a day where they're throwing truth out the window. Hey, I got three little kids here this morning. And if somebody don't stand and give the precepts, yeah. churches are dying of tr without truth. Right. Preachers are more interested in entertaining and giving cute principles than just preaching the word of God. When they walked by that ark, they would have remembered, we gotta stand together in truth. We gotta stand together in truth. When they walked by that day, they knew that inside there was Aaron's rod that budded. Cut off, watch this, cut off, but still had life. That's supernatural. Did you hear what I said? That's supernatural. Preacher, preacher, what are you trying to say? Not only do we have to stand together in the precepts of God, we got to stand together in the power of God. We've got to stand together where the power of God comes into this place. We can, boy, it thrilled my heart to sit right there this morning and to hear that choir sing. I don't know if you failed it or not, but the Holy Spirit started circulating in this place and I could feel the presence of God as he began to move. Church, we cannot ever lose that. The power of God. I, I, I want to preach with the power. I want Brother Mike to lead with the power. I want the choir to sing with the power. If you're teaching a class, do it with the power of God. Listen to me. You say, preacher, what would your desire for Clear Springs to be 
for the power of God to be so real in this place that when sinners walk in the back door, there's a sense of conviction because in their heart they feel the presence of God in this place. Listen, I'm just going to be, I'm just gonna, I know probably people probably watching us up there on this TV, but I'm just going to say what I want to say right here. Listen well. I want there to be a fire sparked on this hill and smoke start rising and everybody in this community say, we got to go to Clear Springs and figure out what in the world has God God sat on fire up on that hill. Our children need the truth. They need to see old time religion where a man of God takes the word of God and tells them what the word of God says. I was t- they stood together in the truth of God's precepts. They stood together in the truth of God's Power. If there's anything churches need today, they need power. Let, let me say this and I'll move on. We're going home. This beautiful building that God has blessed you with, it means absolutely nothing. If the power of God... Can y'all help me preach right here? It don't mean anything if the presence of God ain't in this place. You can have all the parking lots you want to have. You can have all the upward leagues you want to do. You can have all the Sunday school classes filled from the front of the seat to the back seat. You can have everything that you want. You can have a choir that can sing with angels, but it all means nothing unless the power of the Holy One comes down and His presence fills this place. We got to stand together in the truth of God's power. By the way, there's one more thing. There was a bowl of manna. There was a bowl of manna. <laughs> and every single time they walked by that ark, oh, I remember when we were hungry. And it fell from heaven. You know what? We got to stand together in God's precepts. That's His word. We got to stand together in God's power. We got to stand together with God's provisions. We got to stand together with God's provisions. You start thinking about how good God has been. 